In the previous video, we have studied the formulas for microstrip lines which can be used for the analysis or the design of microstrip lines. It should be noted that these formulas are based on quasi-static solution. Quasi-static solution it means that it is nearly based on uh, DC analysis or static waves. The question now is, what is the effect of increasing the frequency on the characteristics of the microstrip line? This video is studying frequency dependent effects and higher order modes in microstrip lines. We say that at higher frequency, number of effects can occur that leads to variation of quasi-static results for effective dielectric constant, characteristic impedance and attenuation of microstrip lines. This means that the effective dielectric constant is not a constant value as it has been mentioned in the previous video. Also, the characteristic impedance and the attenuation coefficient. In addition, these new effects can arise, such as higher order modes and parasitic reactances. Effectively, in almost all types of wavelengths at high frequencies, we are facing higher order modes. So, so it is not only for microstrip lines. Uh, because microstrip lines is not true transverse electromagnetic lines, its propagation constant is not linear function of frequency. And this actually reflects on the effective dielectric constant. This means that the effective dielectric constant is varying with the frequency. Another important point is that in the quasi-static solution, it was assumed that the current distribution along the stream is constant. In practical case or in actual case, it is not constant. The current distribution along the strip conductor is not uniform across the width of the strip. And its distribution varies with the frequency. And maybe uh, the more appropriate distribution along the strip looks like letter U is concentrated at the edges of the strip and is nearly very small or nearly zero at the center of the strip. The thickness of the strip conductor also has an effect on the current distribution and hence effect on the line parameter, especially the conductor loss. So the thickness of the strip plays another role and this thickness in terms of wavelengths has another effect because uh, effectively if the thickness is slightly large we are only dealing with the skin dips along the thickness of the strip of the conductor. In this video we are going to study some of these effects on microstrip light. The first effect is the frequency dependent effect of effective permittivity. We have studied effective permittivity in the previous video for microstrip line based on quasi static solution, and we said that this effective permittivity uh, is greater than 1 and less than epsilon r, which is the permittivity of the substrate. Uh, the effective permittivity as a function of frequency equals epsilon r of the substrate minus epsilon r minus epsilon effective at the frequency zero. Epsilon effective at frequency zero is actually the relation of epsilon effective which we have driven in the previous video for the quasi-static microstrip line over one plus g as a function of f. g as a function of f is a function defined as 
small g of f over f b square where g is a constant equal 0.6 plus 0.009 z naught where z naught is a characteristic impedance of the quasi-static microstrip line in this case and f is the operating frequency in gigahertz and fb is defined as z naught over 8 by d where d is the substrate thickness and d in this case in centimeters so in the, the value of d is given in centimeters not in meter z naught is a characteristic impedance in ohms we can obtain the value of g the value of fd so we can obtain the function g of f by this way we can obtain the effective epsilon as a function of the frequency it is interesting to note here that if the frequency is very large so the value of f over fb squared is very large this means that the value of g is very large this means that the denominator here is very large this means that this would be nearly zero means that at very high frequency the effective epsilon or the effective permittivity tends to be epsilon r of the substrate directly at very high frequency the effective permittivity tends to be epsilon r of the substrate directly on the other hand or the other limit when the frequency tends to zero the function g of f tends to zero so this would be nearly unity in this case it would be epsilon r minus epsilon r minus minus so it would be plus epsilon effective of zero so at the limit of the frequency is very small or tends to zero the epsilon effective it would be nearly the epsilon effective of the quasi-static solution so we have two limits at very low frequency epsilon effective would be nearly the epsilon effective of the quasi-static solution at very high frequency or at infinite frequency epsilon effective would be nearly epsilon r which is the substrate dielectric constant it means that at a very high frequency the microstrip lines would be equivalent to barrel billet waveguide where the upper strip corresponds to the upper blade. Uh, what is the maximum frequency which can be used for microstrip line such that we are not exciting higher order surface wave modes? We have studied in the surface waves that the grounded dielectric substrate can support transverse magnetic and transverse electric surface wave modes. And we have seen that the lowest cutoff frequency for the transverse magnetic surface wave mode is zero. So at any frequency, there is transverse magnetic zero mode. So, in the case of microstrip line, which is composed of grounded dielectric substrate and a strip above this grounded dielectric substrate, there should be transverse magnetic zero surface wave mode. Effectively, the transverse magnetic surface wave mode is composed of EZ and E x and h1 ez is effectively at the same direction of the microstrip line this means that the transverse magnetic mode will be excited along the microstrip line itself 
the transverse magnetic zero surface mode for a grounded dielectric lamp, uh, substrate has zero cut frequency and because some of the field lines of this mode are aligned with the field lines of the quasi transverse electromagnetic mode of the micro supply it is possible for coupling to occur from the desert microstrip mode to the surface wave mode. This means that some of the quasi transverse electromagnetic mode which is propagating in this direction is converted to transverse magnetic zero mode propagating through the substrate. This is leading to excessive power loss because actually our plan is to guide the electromagnetic wave through the microstrip line. So any guided waves inside the substrate correspond to power losses because this part of power is not propagating through the microstrip line. It is propagating through substrate and we are not planning to guide the wave through the substrate. So this is leading to excess in power loss and possibility of undesired coupling in adjacent microstrip elements. This coupling is effectively taking play in the longitudinal direction because in this case the electric field EZ is in the longitudinal direction. So if we have two microstrip lines along the same line along EZ and assume that we have these two microstrip lines are separated by a distance. So in this case some of the transverse magnetic zero mode coming from the first microstrip line will be coupled to uh, the other microstrip line in the same direction or in the same axis. Okay. So in this case, the transverse magnetic zero mode is basically taking effect on the coupling on the longitudinal direction of the microstrip line. Because the fields of the transverse magnetic zero surface wave mode has zero at DC, there is a little coupling to quasi as because the fields, not, not the fields, the cutoff of the transverse magnetic zero surface mode are zero or DC, there is little coupling due to the quasi transverse electromagnetic microstrip mode until critical frequency is reached. Effectively, I cannot avoid the transverse magnetic zero mode, but at least I am trying to avoid the higher order surface wave modes. This means that I am not planning to use this microstrip line to reach the following transverse magnetic surface wave mode. The following transverse surface wave mode is uh, transverse magnetic one. And this transverse magnetic surface mode one is characterized by cutoff frequency FT1, which we have discussed in the surface wave mode, given by C over 2D square root 2 over epsilon R minus 1, 10 minus 1 epsilon Oh. So, we should use our microstrip line below this cutoff frequency to avoid exciting the transverse magnetic one mode. So, this is the threshold frequency is greater than zero and this is then the cutoff frequency TM1 surface wave mode. So, the maximum frequency that can we use based on the exciting of TM1 surface wave mode is this frequency, which is given by F cut of 1, FT1 equals nearly C over 2 by D square root 2 over epsilon R minus 1, 10 minus 1 epsilon R. On the other hand, The transverse electric modes are mainly responsible for coupling between 
better in microstrip light. In the previous case, in transverse magnetic mode, the transverse surface mode, the transverse magnetic surface wave mode are responsible for coupling in longitudinal direction. But for the case of transverse electric mode, transverse electric mode are responsible for coupling for barrier microstrip line. So in this case, if I have a microstrip line going, for example, in direction Z, and then it is bent in direction X or direction Y, so if I have transverse part of microstrip line, at this bend, there is excitation of transverse electric mode. Conventionally, uh, the long microstrip lines does not excite transverse electric mode, but at any bend, this bend will excite transverse electric mode. And transverse electric mode the first mode is transverse electric one. There is no transverse electric zero. For surface wave modes, there is no transverse electric zero mode. We discussed this in uh, the surface wave modes of grounded dielectric stem. And the cutoff frequency of the first transverse electric mode is given by C over 4d square root epsilon r minus 1. And it should be that this cutoff frequency of the first transverse electric mode is less than the cutoff frequency of the transverse magnetic one. The transverse magnetic one was c over 2d square root 2 over epsilon r minus 1. However, here, C over 4D square root epsilon R minus 1. So, the cutoff frequency of the transverse electric mode, the first mode, is less than the cutoff frequency of TM1 mode. This means that the upper frequency or the actual upper frequency is determined actually by the cutoff frequency of TE10 mode. That's what we are saying when a microstrip circuit has transverse discontinuity, such as bend, junction, or even step change in the width. The transverse current on the conductor that are generated may allow coupling to transverse electric surface wave modes. And the minimum threshold frequency where such coupling become important is given by the cutoff frequency of the transverse electric one surface mode given by f cut of 2 equals c over 4 d square root epsilon r minus 1 which is less than cut of f t1 of t transverse magnetic one so the upper frequency of using a microstrip line is basically determined by this equation if we are taking in consideration the transverse magnetic and transverse electric surface wave modes. Okay. All right. Another point is based on the transverse resonance in the microstrip line. What happened for the electromagnetic wave along the width of the microstrip line? For wide microstrip line, it is possible to excite transverse resonance along the x direction, the transverse direction, not the longitudinal direction. The longitudinal direction is the z direction. But the x direction is the transverse direction of the microstrip line. And for wide microstrip line, maybe we have a resonance along x axis below the strip in the dielectric region. Why? Because actually the side or the side walls or on the strip conductor are approximately uh, represented as a magnetic wall. So, effectively, the microstrip line can be presented as a conductor or perfect electric conductor in the upper side, perfect electric conductor in the lower side, and two parallel magnetic conductor at the edges of the microstrip line. 
So we have some sort of a uh, closed wave guide where the upper and lower sides are perfectly conductor and left and right sides are uh, perfect magnetic conductor. In this case, we have a different configuration for guiding structure based on the resonance along the X direction, which is not the same as the microscope line. And it is not desired at all to operate at this uh, mode because this is not the microstrip line configuration. This is closed uh, waveguide configuration. Uh, this maximum frequency is obtained when the width is nearly lambda by 2. And effectively, we are not talking about the physical width. We are talking about the width, the width including the fringing effect. So, this cutoff frequency is determined as C over square root epsilon R 2W, where W is the physical width of the microscope line, or 2W, sorry, 2W is the physical length, is the, is the physical width of the microscope line, plus D. D is the effect of the fringing effect. D effectively is the substrate thickness. And we have a fringing effect in each side is D over 2, so the total which including the fringing is 2w which is the width of the microscope line plus the fringing effect in both sides plus d over 2 plus d over 2 which is d this corresponds to the cutoff frequency or the maximum fre operating frequency of the microstrip line according to the transverse region and usually this frequency is much higher than the excitation of the transverse electric one mode. So effectively, the dominant frequency which play the main role is the cutoff frequency of the transverse electric one mode. Uh, another mode which can operate in uh, microstrip line is the parallel plate type waveguide mode. And parallel plate waveguide uh, may be propagated when the spacing between the strip and the ground is nearly lambda by 2. And this is very rare value or this is a very rare situation because usually the substrate thickness is very small. So this condition is very, uh, it, is, it is not practical. Okay. But if it happens, if the substrate of the, uh, the dielectric has nearly thickness around lambda by 2, the threshold of frequency in this case is F cut 4, FT4, which is C over 2D square root epsilon R. And usually we don't reach this frequency at all in operating microscope. Okay, so now we have finished the frequency dependent behavior of microscope.